Many programming language type systems support subtyping. Variance refers to how subtyping between more complex types relates to subtyping between their components. For instance, if the type cat is a subtype of animal, then an expression of type cat can be used wherever an expression of type animal is used. How should a list of cats relate to a list of animals? Or how should a function returning cat relate to a function returning animal? How should a list of animals contain at same time an instance of cat and another of fish? Depending on the variance of the type constructor, the subtyping relation of the simple types may be either preserved, reversed, or ignored for the respective complex types. In the OCAML programming language, for example, list of cat is a subtype of list of animal because the list constructor is covariant. This means that the subtyping relation of the simple types are preserved for the complex types, while function from animal to string is a subtype of function from cat to string because the function type constructor is contravariant in the argument type. Here the subtyping relation of the simple types is reversed for the complex types. A programming language designer will consider variance when devising typing rules for language features such as arrays, inheritance, and generic data types. By making type constructors covariant or contravariant instead of invariant, more programs will be accepted as well typed. On the other hand, programmers often find contravariance unintuitive, and accurately tracking variants to avoid runtime type errors can lead to complex typing rules. In order to keep the type system simple and allow useful programs, a language may treat a type constructor as invariant even if it would be safe to consider it variant, or treat it as covariant even though that could violate type safety. Topic formal definition Within the type system of a programming language, a typing rule or a type constructor is, covariant if it preserves the ordering of types, which orders types from more specific to more generic, contravariant if it reverses this ordering, bivariant if both of these apply i.e., both ii and ii at the same time, invariant or nonvariant if neither of these applies, the article can considers how this applies to some common type constructors. C-sharp examples For example, in C-sharp, if cat is a subtype of animal, then, ienumerable is a subtype of ienumerable. The subtyping is preserved because ienumerable is covariant on t-action as a subtype of action. The subtyping is reversed because action is contravariant on T neither illist nor illist is a subtype of the other, because illist is invariant on T the variance of a C-sharp generic interface is declared by placing the out covariant or in contravariant attribute on zero or more of its type parameters. For each so marked type parameter, the compiler conclusively verifies, with any violation being fatal, that such use is globally consistent. The above interfaces are declared as ienumerable, action, and illist. Types with more than one type parameter may specify different variances on each type parameter. For example, the delegate type func represents a function with a contravariant input parameter of type t and a covariant return value of type result. The typing rules for interface variants ensure type safety. For example, an action represents a first class function expecting an argument of type t, and a function that can handle any type of animal can always be used instead of one that can only handle cats. Arrays <laughs> 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 
Read only data types sources can be covariant. Write only data types sinks can be contravariant. Mutable data types which act as both sources and sinks should be invariant. To illustrate this general phenomenon, consider the array type. For the type animal we can make the type animal, which is an array of animals. For the purposes of this example, this array supports both reading and writing elements. We have the option to treat this as either covariant, a cat is an animal contravariant, an animal is a cat invariant an animal is not a cat and a cat is not an animal if we wish to avoid type errors then only the third choice is safe clearly not every animal can be treated as if it were a cat since a client reading from the array will expect a cat but an animal may contain e.g. a dog so the contravariant rule is not safe Conversely, a cat cannot be treated as an animal. It should always be possible to put a dog into an animal. With covariant arrays this cannot be guaranteed to be safe, since the backing store might actually be an array of cats. So the covariant rule is also not safe. The array constructor should be invariant. Note that this is only an issue for mutable arrays, the covariant rule is safe for immutable read -only arrays. Topic covariant arrays in Java and C Sharp Early versions of Java and C Sharp did not include generics, also termed parametric polymorphism. In such a setting, making arrays invariant rules out useful polymorphic programs. For example, consider writing a function to shuffle an array, or a function that tests two arrays for equality using the object, equals method on the elements. The implementation does not depend on the exact type of element stored in the array, so it should be possible to write a single function that works on all types of arrays. It is easy to implement functions of type, however, if array types were treated as invariant, it would only be possible to call these functions on an array of exactly the type object. One could not, for example, shuffle an array of strings. Therefore, both Java and C Sharp treat array types covariantly. For instance, in Java string is a subtype of object, and in C Sharp string is a subtype of object. As discussed above, covariant arrays lead to problems with writes into the array. Java and C Sharp deal with this by marking each array object with a type when it is created. Each time a value is stored into an array, the execution environment will check that the runtime type of the value is equal to the runtime type of the array. If there is a mismatch, an array store exception Java or array type mismatch exception C -sharp is thrown. In the above example, one can read from the array B safely. It is only trying to write to the array that can lead to trouble. One drawback to this approach is that it leaves the possibility of a runtime error that a stricter type system could have caught at compile time. Also, it hurts performance because each write into an array requires an additional runtime check. With the addition of generics, Java and C Sharp now offer ways to write this kind of polymorphic function without relying on covariance. The array comparison and shuffling functions can be given the parameterized types alternatively, to enforce that a C sharp method accesses a collection in a read only way. One can use the interface I enumerable instead of passing it an array object. 
Topic function types Languages with first class functions have function types like a function expecting a cat and returning an animal, written cat to animal in OCAML syntax or func in C sharp syntax. Those languages also need to specify when one function type is a subtype of another, that is, when it is safe to use a function of one type in a context that expects a function of a different type. It is safe to substitute a function f for a function g if f accepts a more general type of arguments and returns a more specific type than g. For example, functions of type animal to cat, cat to cat, and animal to animal can be used wherever a cat to animal was expected. One can compare this to the robustness principle of communication be liberal in what you accept and conservative in what you produce. The general rule is S1 S2 T1 T2 T2 display style S underscore 1 right arrow S underscore 2 leq t underscore one right arrow t underscore two if t one s one display style t underscore one leq s underscore one and s two t two display style s underscore two leq t underscore two using inference rule notation the same rule can be written as t one S one S two T two S one S two T one T two Display style T underscore one LEQ S underscore one quad S underscore two LEQ T underscore two over S underscore one right arrow S underscore two LEQ T underscore one right arrow T underscore two in other words, the type constructor is contravariant in the input type and covariant in the output type. This rule was first stated formally by John C. Reynolds, and further popularized in a paper by Luca Cardelli. When dealing with functions that take functions as arguments, this rule can be applied several times. For example, by applying the rule twice, we see that a b b a b b if a a. In other words, the type a b b is covariant in the a position. For complicated types it can be confusing to mentally trace why a given type specialization is or isn't type safe, but it is easy to calculate which positions are co- and contravariant. A position is covariant if it is on the left side of an even number of arrows applying to it. Inheritance in object-oriented languages When a subclass overrides a method in a superclass, the compiler must check that the overriding method has the right type. While some languages require that the type exactly matches the type in the superclass invariance, it is also type-safe to allow the overriding method to have a better type. By the usual subtyping rule for function types, this means that the overriding method should return a more specific type return type covariance, and accept a more general argument argument type contravariance. In UML notation, the possibilities are as follows Variance and method overriding, overview for a concrete example, suppose we are writing a class to model an animal shelter. We assume that cat is a subclass of animal, and that we have a base class using Java syntax. 
Now the question is, if we subclass animal shelter, what types are we allowed to give to get animal for adoption and put animal? Topic: <laughs> Covariant method return type. In a language which allows covariant return types, a derived class can override the getAnimal for adoption method to return a more specific type. Among mainstream U languages, Java and C++ support covariant return types, while C# -sharp does not. Adding the covariant return type was one of the first modifications of the C++ language approved by the Standards Committee in 1998. Scala and D also support covariant return types. Topic: <laughs> Contravariant method argument type. Similarly, it is type safe to allow an overriding method to accept a more general argument than the method in the base class. Not many object oriented languages actually allow this. C and Java would interpret this as an unrelated method with an overloaded name. However, Sather supported both covariance and contravariance. Calling convention for overridden methods are covariant without arguments and return values, and contravariant with normal arguments with the mode in. Topic: <laughs> <laughs> Covariant method argument type. Uniquely among mainstream languages, Eiffel allows the arguments of an overriding method to have a more specific type than the method in the superclass argument type covariance. Thus, the Eiffel version of the following code would type check, with putanimal overriding the method in the base class. This is not type safe. By upcasting a cat shelter to an animal shelter, one can try to place a dog in a cat shelter. That does not meet cat shelter argument restrictions, and will result in a runtime error. The lack of type safety, known as the catcall problem, in the Eiffel community, where cat or cat is a changed availability or type has been a long-standing issue. Over the years, various combinations of global static analysis, local static analysis, and new language features have been proposed to remedy it, and these have been implemented in some Eiffel compilers. Despite the type safety problem, the Eiffel designers consider covariant argument types crucial for modeling real-world requirements. The cat shelter illustrates a common phenomenon, it is a kind of animal shelter but has additional restrictions, and it seems reasonable to use inheritance and restricted argument types to model this. In proposing this use of inheritance, the Eiffel designers reject the Liskov substitution principle, which states that objects of subclasses should always be less restricted than objects of their superclass. One other instance of a mainstream language allowing covariance in method arguments is PHP in regards to class constructors. In the following example, the underscore underscore construct method is accepted, despite the method argument being covariant to the parent's method argument. Were this method anything other than underscore underscore construct, an error would occur. Another example where covariant arguments seem helpful is so-called binary methods, i.e. methods where the argument is expected to be of the same type as the object the method is called on. An example is the comparato method, A. Comparato B checks whether A comes before or after B in some ordering, but the way to compare, say, two rational numbers will be different from the way to compare two strings. 
Other common examples of binary methods include equality tests, arithmetic operations, and set operations like subset and union. In older versions of Java, the comparison method was specified as an interface comparable. The drawback of this is that the method is specified to take an argument of type object. A typical implementation would first down cast this argument, throwing an error if it is not of the expected type. In a language with covariant arguments, the argument to comparato could be directly given the desired type rational number, hiding the type cast. Of course, this would still give a runtime error if comparato was then called on e.g. a string. Topic avoiding the need for covariant argument types Other language features can provide the apparent benefits of covariant arguments while preserving Liskov substitutability. In a language with generics aka parametric polymorphism and bounded quantification, the previous examples can be written in a type-safe way. Instead of defining animal shelter, we define a parameterized class shelter. One drawback of this is that the implementer of the base class needs to foresee which types will need to be specialized in the subclasses. Similarly, in recent versions of Java the comparable interface has been parameterized, which allows the downcast to be omitted in a type-safe way. Another language feature that can help is multiple dispatch. One reason that binary methods are awkward to write is that in a call like a dot comparato b, selecting the correct implementation of comparato really depends on the runtime type of both a and b, but in a conventional u language only the runtime type of a is taken into account. In a language with common Lisp object system CLO style multiple dispatch, the comparison method could be written as a generic function where both arguments are used for method selection. Giuseppe Castagna observed that in a typed language with multiple dispatch, a generic function can have some arguments which control dispatch and some left over arguments which do not. Because the method selection rule chooses the most specific applicable method, if a method overrides another method, then the overriding method will have more specific types for the controlling arguments. On the other hand, to ensure type safety the language still must require the left over arguments to be at least as general. Using the previous terminology, types used for runtime method selection are covariant while types not used for runtime method selection of the method are contravariant. Conventional single dispatch languages like Java also obey this rule. Their only one argument is used for method selection, the receiver object, passed along to a method as the hidden argument this, and indeed the type of this is more specialized inside overriding methods than in the superclass. Castagna suggests that examples where covariant argument types are superior, particularly binary methods, should be handled using multiple dispatch which is naturally covariant. However, most programming languages do not support multiple dispatch. <laughs> Summary of variance and inheritance The following table summarizes the rules for overriding methods in the languages discussed above. Topic generic types in programming languages that support generics aka parametric polymorphism, the programmer can extend the type system with new constructors. For example, a C-sharp interface like illist makes it possible to construct new types like illist or illist. The question then arises what the variants of these type constructors should be. 
There are two main approaches. In languages with declaration site variance annotations e.g., C-sharp, the programmer annotates the definition of a generic type with the intended variance of its type parameters. With use site variance annotations e.g., Java, the programmer instead annotates the places where a generic type is instantiated. Topic: Declaration site variance annotations. The most popular languages with declaration site variance annotations are C# -sharp using the keywords out and in, and Scala and OCaml using the keywords plus and. C# -sharp only allows variance annotations for interface types, while Scala and OCaml allow them for both interface types and concrete data types. Topic interfaces in C# -sharp, each type parameter of a generic interface can be marked covariant out, contravariant in, or invariant, no annotation. For example, we can define an interface I enumerator of read-only iterators, and declare it to be covariant out in its type parameter. With this declaration, I enumerator will be treated as covariant in its type argument, e.g. I enumerator is a subtype of I enumerator. The type checker enforces that each method declaration in an interface only mentions the type parameters in a way consistent with the in out annotations. That is, a parameter that was declared covariant must not occur in any contravariant positions, where a position is contravariant if it occurs under an odd number of contravariant type constructors. The precise rule is that the return types of all methods in the interface must be valid covariantly and all the method argument types must be valid contravariantly, where valid s Li is defined as follows, non-generic types classes, structs, enums, etc. are valid both co- and contravariantly. A type argument T is valid covariantly if it was not marked in, and valid contravariantly if it was not marked out an array type A is valid S Li if A is. This is because C sharp has covariant arrays. A generic type G, and greater than is valid S Li if for each argument I, I is valid S Li, and the ith parameter to G is declared covariant, or I is valid not S Li, and the ith parameter to G is declared contravariant, or I is valid both covariantly and contravariantly, and the ith parameter to G is declared invariant. As an example, of how these rules apply, consider the illist interface. The argument type T of insert must be valid contravariantly, i.e. the type parameter T must not be tagged out. Similarly, the result type I enumerator of get enumerator must be valid covariantly, i.e. since I enumerator is a covariant interface the type T must be valid covariantly, i.e. the type parameter T must not be tagged in. This shows that the interface illist is not allowed to be marked either co- or contravariant. In the common case of a generic data structure such as illist, these restrictions mean that an out parameter can only be used for methods getting data out of the structure, and an in parameter can only be used for methods putting data into the structure, hence the choice of keywords. <laughs> data. C# -sharp allows variance annotations on the parameters of interfaces, but not the parameters of classes. Because fields in C# -sharp classes are always mutable, variantly parameterized classes in C# -sharp would not be very useful. 
but languages which emphasize immutable data can make good use of covariant data types. For example, both in Scala and OCAML the immutable list type is covariant, list cat is a subtype of list animal. Scala's rules for checking variance annotations are essentially the same as C-sharp However, there are some idioms that apply to immutable data structures in particular. They are illustrated by the following excerpt from the definition of the list a class. First, class members that have a variant type must be immutable. Here, head has the type A, which was declared covariant plus, and indeed head was declared as a method def. Trying to declare it as a mutable field VAR would be rejected as type error. Second, even if a data structure is immutable, it will often have methods where the parameter type occurs contravariantly. For example, consider the method, which adds an element to the front of a list. The implementation works by creating a new object of the similarly named class, the class of non-empty lists. The most obvious type to give it would be However, this would be a type error, because the covariant parameter A appears in a contravariant position as a function argument. But there is a trick to get around this problem. We give, a more general type, which allows adding an element of any type B. As long as B is a supertype of A note that this relies on list being covariant, since this has type list a, and we treat it as having type list b. At first glance it may not be obvious that the generalized type is sound, but if the programmer starts out with the simpler type declaration, the type errors will point out the place that needs to be generalized. <laughs> Inferring variance It is possible to design a type system where the compiler automatically infers the best possible variance annotations for all data type parameters. However, the analysis can get complex for several reasons. First, the analysis is non-local since the variance of an interface I depends on the variance of all interfaces that I mentions. Second, in order to get unique best solutions the type system must allow bivariant parameters which are simultaneously co- and contravariant. And finally, the variance of type parameters should arguably be a deliberate choice by the designer of an interface, not something that just happens. For these reasons most languages do very little variance inference. C Sharp and Scala do not infer any variance annotations at all. OCAML can infer the variance of parameterized concrete data types, but the programmer must explicitly specify the variance of abstract types interfaces. For example, consider an OCAML data type T which wraps a function. The compiler will automatically infer that T is contravariant in the first parameter, and covariant in the second. The programmer can also provide explicit annotations, which the compiler will check are satisfied. Thus the following declaration is equivalent to the previous one. Explicit annotations in OCAML become useful when specifying interfaces. For example, the standard library interface map, S for association tables include an annotation saying that the map type constructor is covariant in the result type. This ensures that e.g. cat intmap, T is a subtype of animal intmap, T. 
Topic use site variants annotations wildcards one drawback of the declaration site approach is that many interface types must be made invariant for example we saw above that illist needed to be invariant because it contained both insert and get enumerator in order to expose more variants, the API designer could provide additional interfaces which provide subsets of the available methods e.g. an insert only list which only provides insert. However this quickly becomes unwieldy. Use site variants annotations aim to give users of a class more opportunities for subtyping without requiring the designer of the class to define multiple interfaces with different variants. Instead, each time a class or interface is used in a type declaration, the programmer can indicate that only a subset of the methods will be used. In effect, each definition of a class also makes available interfaces for the covariant and contravariant parts of that class. Therefore, the designer of the class no longer needs to take variants into account, increasing reusability. Java provides use site variants annotations through wildcards, a restricted form of bounded existential types. A parameterized type can be instantiated by a wildcard, together with an upper or lower bound, e.g. list or list, an unbounded wildcard-like list is equivalent to list. Such a type represents list for some unknown type 10 which satisfies the bound. For example, if L has type list, then the type checker will accept because the type 10 is known to be a subtype of animal, but will be rejected as a type error since an animal is not necessarily an X in general. Given some interface I, a reference to A I forbids using methods from the interface where T occurs contravariantly in the type of the method. Conversely, if L had type list one could call L.add but not L.get. While plain generic types in Java are invariant e.g. there is no subtyping relationship between list and list, wildcard types can be made more specific by specifying a tighter bound, for example list is a subtype of list. This shows that wildcard types are covariant in their upper bounds and also contravariant in their lower bounds. In total, given a wildcard type like C, there are three ways to form a subtype, by specializing the class C, by specifying a tighter bound T, or by replacing the wildcard, by a specific type C figure. By combining two steps of subtyping, it is therefore possible to e.g. pass an argument of type list to a method expecting a list. This is exactly the kind of programs that covariant interface types allow. The type list acts as an interface type containing only the covariant methods of list, but the implementer of list did not have to define it ahead of time. This is use site variance. In the common case of a generic data structure illist, covariant parameters are used for methods getting data out of the structure, and contravariant parameters for methods putting data into the structure. The mnemonic for producer extends, consumer super pex, from the book Effective Java by Joshua Block gives an easy way to remember when to use covariance and contravariance. Wild cards are flexible, but there is a drawback. While use site variance means that API designers need not consider variants of type parameters to interfaces, they must often instead use more complicated method signatures. A common example involves the comparable interface. Suppose we want to write a function that finds the biggest element in a collection. 
The elements need to implement the Comparato method, so a first try might be however, this type is not general enough, one can find the max of a collection, but not a collection. The problem is that Gregorian calendar does not implement comparable, but instead the better interface comparable. In Java, unlike in C Sharp, comparable is not considered a subtype of comparable. Instead the type of max has to be modified, the bounded wildcard, super t conveys the information that max calls only contravariant methods from the comparable interface. This particular example is frustrating because all the methods in comparable are contravariant, so that condition is trivially true. A declaration site system could handle this example with less clutter by annotating only the definition of comparable. Topic comparing declaration site and use site annotations Use site variance annotations provide additional flexibility, allowing more programs to type check. However, they have been criticized for the complexity they add to the language, leading to complicated type signatures and error messages. One way to assess whether the extra flexibility is useful is to see if it is used in existing programs. A survey of a large set of Java libraries found that 39% of wildcard annotations could have been directly replaced by a declaration site annotations. Thus the remaining 61% is an indication on places where Java benefits from having the use site system available. In a declaration site language, libraries must either expose less variants, or define more interfaces. For example, the Scala Collections library defines three separate interfaces for classes which employ covariance, a covariant base interface containing common methods, an invariant mutable version which adds side-affecting methods, and a covariant immutable version which may specialize the inherited implementations to exploit structural sharing. This design works well with declaration site annotations, but the large number of interfaces carry a complexity cost for clients of the library. And modifying the library interface may not be an option, in particular, one goal when adding generics to Java was to maintain binary backwards compatibility. On the other hand, Java wildcards are themselves complex. In a conference presentation Joshua Block criticized them as being too hard to understand and use, stating that when adding support for closures we simply cannot afford another wildcards. Early versions of Scala used use site variance annotations but programmers found them difficult to use in practice, while declaration site annotations were found to be very helpful when designing classes. Later versions of Scala added Java-style existential types and wildcards, however, according to Martin Odersky, if there were no need for interoperability with Java then these would probably not have been included. Ross Tate argues that part of the complexity of Java wildcards is due to the decision to encode use site variants using a form of existential types. The original proposals used special purpose syntax for variance annotations, writing list instead of Java's more verbose list. Since wildcards are a form of existential types they can be used for more things than just variance. A type like list, some type of list lets objects be passed to methods or stored in fields without exactly specifying their type parameters. This is particularly valuable for classes such as class where most of the methods do not mention the type parameter. However, type inference for existential types is a difficult problem. 
For the compiler implementer, Java wildcards raise issues with type checker termination, type argument inference, and ambiguous programs. In general, it is undecidable whether a Java program using generics is well typed or not, so any type checker will have to go into an infinite loop or time out for some programs. For the programmer, it leads to complicated type error messages. Java typechecks wildcard types by replacing the wildcards with fresh type variables so-called capture conversion. This can make error messages harder to read, because they refer to type variables that the programmer did not directly write. For example, trying to add a cat to a list will give an error like method list. Add, capture number 1 is not applicable. Actual argument cat cannot be converted to capture number one by method invocation conversion. Where capture number one is a fresh type variable. Capture number one extends animal from capture of, extends animal. Since both declaration site and use site annotations can be useful, some type systems provide both. Topic. Origin of the term covariance These terms come from the notion of covariant and contravariant functors in category theory. Consider the category C C whose objects are types and whose morphisms represent the subtype relationship. This is an example of how any partially ordered set can be considered as a category, then for example the function type constructor takes two types P and R and creates a new type PR, so it takes objects in C 2 to objects in C display style C by the subtyping rule for function types this operation reverses for the first argument and preserves it for the second so it is a contravariant functor in the first argument and a covariant functor in the second topic See also Polymorphism, computer science, Inheritance, computer science.